Well, more than 30% of all Americans are celebrating the end of summer by traveling. And this Labor Day weekend, many airline passengers faced another round of flight delays and frustration. Mark Childrop from AAA joins us now to talk all things travel. There is some good news for airline travelers. It appears the airlines are stepping up and promising better customer service. What can passengers expect, Mark? Thanks for being here on a holiday. Thank you. It's great to be here. And you're right that uh, consumers have been dealing with airline issues for some time this year. It seems like every weekend we're hearing reports about cancellations and folks really getting hung up at the airport. So that's really raised the attention of the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation Department. And they got a bit of a stern warning from the government recently, the major airlines, that they need to step it up and provide better customer service and help people get uh, lodging overnight if they're stuck at the airport overnight and at the minimum uh, give them uh, vouchers for meals and snacks and other things that may be uh, required because they've had that flight cancellation. So thankfully most of the airlines have stepped up and revised their policies uh, but still you, there are things that you're going to want to do to avoid getting in that predicament in the first place and the main thing is check in as early as possible. Try to book that early flight. Mm -hmm. If you have an afternoon flight you have a much higher chance of getting canceled or bumped, it's those earlier flights that are have the better shot of getting out on time because of that domino effect as those cancellations begin to happen. Yeah, interesting. They did have that disclaimer. They're not, you know, compensating when it's the weather related all the time for them. Okay, it's not just airports. Many travelers took car trips this weekend. What is AAA expecting for the ride home? When are the, the best times to travel and what times do we avoid? Yeah, so the traffic's going to be a little bit lighter this week. You know, Labor Day's changed over the years. A lot of people went back to school last week, uh, and as a result, the end of the summer has kind of been moved up a little bit earlier. So you should have pretty good traffic volumes on the roads. The earlier you can leave, the better. We always suggest giving yourself maybe an hour additional time than you really think you need, so that way you can move at a calm, relatively peaceful pace, and if you do get caught in a little bit of a jam, that's no big deal. However, I'm looking at the weather report, which you so uh, well explained, that uh, many folks, if you're traveling tomorrow or uh, on Wednesday, uh, you may be encountering some rain and, and bad weather uh, on Tuesday and tomorrow. So if you can postpone your departure till later in the week with those sunny skies, that's good. Because if you get caught in a severe downpour, uh, we know those drainage systems sometimes can't keep up when we get that really intense rainfall. There's a risk of hydroplaning. And we've had a very dry summer. So if your wiper blades are dried out, you may not realize it until you need them. So now's a good time to kind of give a quick check of your vehicle and make sure that you're ready to drive in those rainy conditions. Very good tip. And gas prices, they're falling. The average is just under $4 in Massachusetts. How are the prices trending for the fall? Any potential issues that could put them back up again? Yeah, so we expect this lower prices to continue. We've had 83 straight days of gas price declines here, and we're finally below $4 a gallon in Massachusetts, which is great for motorists. And we expect that trend to continue with prices continuing to drop. Frankly, we just don't see the demand that we normally see this time of year. In fact, for August, we're about a million barrels a day of demand for gasoline lower than we were last year. And last year wasn't really a fantastic travel year if you consider where we were before the pandemic with record-breaking travel. So it's definitely good news for motorists. We are looking at the hurricane season. We see some activity in the Atlantic, and that can disrupt oil and gas distribution in this country and raise prices. But we're also looking at what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. The issue right now is that Russia may withhold energy from Europe, and that means there's going to be more pressure on our oil and gas industry to make up for that difference. Diesel in particular and home heating oil prices could be a lot higher this fall, depending on what happens in Europe, because Europe is going to be switching to diesel and other mm -hmm. alternative forms of energy because Russia is no longer going to be supplying that. So that's one thing we are concerned about and looking toward the fall. Okay, thank you. Mark Childrop, Public Affairs Specialist with AAA Northeast. Thanks for all of your insights and joining us this morning. Have a good thank weekend. Thank you very much.